That would have been fun. Hi, everyone. I'm Lonnie. I'm Mark. And this is uh, Comic Book Malarkey. i got to relearn Well, is, is it comic book this time? We're yeah. talking, yeah. We're talking Secret Empire. We're going to talk about Secret Empire. So it's, it's actually, you know, you notice what I did we have, down there. It's just malarkey. Yeah. Now. <laughs> it, it could be anything. And we are sponsored, of course, by Infinity Flux. Yeah, right that's where we're at. We're, we're, here. we're there at the store right On now. On location. Right now. <laughs> We'd say come by and see us, but by the time you get here, we'll be gone. I might be back. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but Secret Empire. At this point, uh, yesterday, Secret Empire number eight, Captain America number twenty-five came out. Now I will say I've read just the core books. Yeah, I've, I've not, not read, read any of the offshoots. Yeah, I've not either. read any of the tie-ins. The first tie-in that I read was Captain America twenty-five because that was a very important book leading in to Secret Empire eight. And right. I read Captain America 25 after, after reading Secret 8. Empire 8 because I didn't know any better. Even though at the very beginning of 8 it says, read after you read Captain Wasn't America. paying any attention. Right, big bold letters. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so far, Secret Empire so far. Uh, to begin with, uh, Captain America tricks everybody into playing right into his plan. Uh, he causes them to make a, a giant impenetrable force field all the way around the earth right. and then puts like a dark force bubble over New York yeah over New York City so basically captures all the mutants and most of the heroes in New York all hey, the spacefaring people he traps outside of Earth planet. and there's Except like for uh, the pretty much there's a good group of mutants that have kind of sort of segregated California and they're calling it the new Titan and it's being that's led, led by, by Zorn. Uh, Zor kinda. Zorn, yeah. King but it's Zorn. actually led by Emma Frost. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, and that was kind of shown in uh, X Men Blue. Oh. Yeah, okay. X Men Blue. They they end up there during this most recent Secret Empire. That's what I've read. You've read all the X tie-ins. Okay. Yeah. Um, which is basically Secret Empire. I mean, which is basically X Men Blue and X Men Gold. None of the other stories are tying in Secret Empire at all. But the original X-Men end up getting captured and taken huh. to that place. And apparently Emma Frost has some kind of a deal going with Hydra. Of course. And so that happens in this book, Captain America. Right. She basically is like, okay, let's work something out. So I guess this is the result of it. Because I was wondering, you know, I, I had read X-Men Blue, and I was like, dang, they're working with Hydra. And then when I read Captain America 25, they are talking about working a deal out. And I'm like, everything's chronologically confused yeah. because they've got a lot of stuff happening. And that was something I noticed. There's a lot of disconjunction between it. And even in the actual books themselves, there's like an eight... There's stuff that takes place, and then oh wait, that was the, the, you're reading the first part of the book, but that first part of the book was a flashback, and now we're in real time, and then now we're doing a flash forward, and and so it was kind of jumpy for me. So the way it was all put together, I mean, mind you, good story, like the story. Oh yeah, because um, you know we're doing, I'm doing written reviews on these books on the website, and I think Secret Empire number eight was uh, the first book I've ever given a ten. Oh wow. Yeah. I'll have to read your review. Um. Now. Captain America 25 is basically a build-up. Right. Sets the stage for Secret Empire 8. And and it's also the rebranding and the remerging of the Captain America title. Because up until now, they've had Steve Wilson, Captain America, and they've had... Uh, or no, sorry, Sam Wilson, Captain America, and Steve Rogers, Captain America. Yeah. And now, back to 25, there's just Captain America. So... <laughs> I'm anticipating that coming in. I'm anticipating that coming out of this, we're only going to have one Captain America. Um, I personally think that you know, like I always, you know, I liked the idea of giving Sam the shield. Well, you know, it. You know, I, I thought that there were other people who would have been a better fit, but Sam's kind of sort of been there for him. You know, but as far as like Sam fully stepping into his role, that whole speech he gave in twenty five. Like, right there at the very kind of beginning where he was like, you know, when I picked up the shield, I said I wasn't much for speeches, but it turns out... He's like a, a reluctant leader. Yeah, and he gives this one last speech, you know, about how, you know, our friends are dead, 
you know, some of our friends are in jail, you know, people have been hitting, you know, who wants to go be their Avengers? And I was like, okay, I can see him as Captain America now. That's That kind of sort of solidified him for me. Um, then there's always going to be that subset of people who, he's the Falcon, and he should always be the Falcon. Leave Steve Rogers as Captain America. But, ah, oh God. Now, well, here's, I, I don't, the story, one through seven, zero through seven, plus the free comic book day special, um, they, is it, am I imagining, or they addressed him taking Thor's hammer? Remember during the free comic book day special, he was holding the hammer? Yeah. And they, they addressed it an issue or two ago, and he said that he didn't carry it just because he didn't feel like it was... Like, they, they asked him why wasn't he carrying the hammer around. And he, he addressed that to, like, well, somebody that worked under him. I'd have to go back and read that word. I forgot exactly what he said, but you're right. He said you know what I'm talking about. about. Yeah, they, he said something about how it, uh, um, like, it, was, it wasn't pure or something like that. Because, you know, now... I, I'm going to have to go back and read it, but I do think it had something to do with, like, it didn't fit into the Hydra worldview somehow, Um, which that's the thing. So, I I do find it kind of weird that he was uh, worthy to possess the hammer. Which brings up what is worthiness, you know? Yeah, and Um, I think that he honestly believes he's doing the right thing. He and I think he does. And he's not doing it to be evil. He's not doing doing it to be evil. He's doing it to make the world better. Yeah. Um, you know, His intentions are still as pure as what they were when he was regular Captain right. America. Basically, and if you want to get into the D&D terms of it, they basically just flipped him from being lawful good to lawful evil. He's still lawful. He still So basically you have to be pure lawful yeah. to... That is, well, yeah, I get Well, I wouldn't call it that. That was just, but I mean, he still, you know, has a code of ethics. He still has yeah. a code of honor. Um, you know, he still has things that he believes in that work for, you know... You know, like kind of like Darth Vader. I would classify Darth Vader as lawful evil. He wants to make the galaxy a better place, even if he has to break your neck to do it. Yeah, he <laughs> just know? has different ways of going about it. Uh, you know, it's just that thing. So, you know, my whole question about this is, who's the bearded Steve that's running around? That especially. I have a theory. Spoiler alert: We're going to talk the end of Secret Empire number eight. Um, major spoiler alert. Um. Which, if, if what I think they're doing with it, they've pretty much stole it from the Onslaught thing. Because the bearded... So, so through the, the entirety of Secret Empire, on the back panel, on the back side, is you've got this guy who is Steve Rogers, yep. with a beard, you know, and the whole night. And he's somewhere, you don't know where he's at. And he's basically running through the woods or a swamp, right? And he oh, ends up... Swamp, oh my god, he's at the nexus of all realities. There's no way. But he, he ends up... At one point, being tortured by the Red Skull. Right. And he runs into Sharon's ghost. Yep. And then he runs into... And then what's he runs the into Kubik. Kobik. Kobik. Kobik, right. Who is the... I didn't even know who Kobik was. I had to go to Wikipedia after I read the end. Oh, Because okay. I, I'm not familiar. I knew about the lead-up, but I didn't know really about the lead-up. She's, and so she's come, the Red yeah. Skull's little girl. Yeah, she is the <laughs> human personification of, of a cosmic the cube. Cosmic Cube. Right. And so, she's the reason for all this. Yeah. And she's very scared, crying and everything, and yeah. he runs into her. So there's there's the little bit of backstory for, for our watchers. So yeah. Cosmic Cubes, you know, you, you saw the Cosmic Cube in, in Avengers and all <laughs> that, but it's completely different in the comics. In the comics, Cosmic Cubes, after a while, become sentient, and then they become pure on living beings. Yeah. There's been several of them. Uh, the, the Collector of Worlds, uh, Cubic, and now Kobic, and then Molecule Man was one, too. Okay. Um, and so Kobik is the one who she was a cosmic cube that was raised by the Red Skull. And the Red Skull is his last little thing before, like, crap went to hell. Got her to convince Steve that he's always been a sleeper hydrant agent. Yeah. And so that's what leads into Secret Empire. That's how we get to where we're at. And, um, it, uh, and so yeah, like, why? So I think she has. Bearded Steve in like a little pocket dimension somewhere. You think she created him? Yeah, kind of like kind of like so this Franklin created the, the Heroes Onward world or the you know the Heroes Reborn world. Who's the real Steve? I would say that they both are. 
I would say that they'll be combined into one. Yeah, I would say that everything that like everything that made Steve Captain America is bearded Steve, and everything that makes him Captain Hydra or Supreme Hydra is the one that's in the physical world. So eventually they'll become one. Yeah. Um, now let's talk about that really important um, inhuman <laughs> part. Now that I, I wondered because I, I'm reading Secret Empire number eight. And they have a piece of Cosmic Cube. Right. And my first thought is, where the hell did that come from? They've been collecting them. I think, yeah. they, I think they picked it up in one of the offshoots. Like, yeah. Like one of the Iron Mans or something, they picked it up. No, the, they got it from Barf. Well, no, they they had one, and then Barf gave them a second one. Okay. Because they should... Because, so Barf's power, which is the most interesting power I've ever found in my life if he I'll, can visualize i will have to agree with iron man though all the really cool superhero names are taken yes <laughs> so if he can visualize something he throws it up and it exists so like the first time you see this is in secret empire one his brother asked him for a captain america lunchbox and he looks it up online gets home and throws it up and then hydra cracks down his door because he hasn't registered because he's an inhuman that's not registered and then we go from there i forgot and, all about that so then, like you were saying, they show him a, they show him a fragment of Cosmic Cube, and he throws another one up. Now here's the thing: he makes mention right before he does this. You know, they're like, "Oh, what can you do with this power?" He's like, "Well, I can't, I can't puke up a um, a gun or yeah. anything because that's too complex." But he manages to puke up a piece of Cosmic Cube. What gets more complex than that? Well, I would have to agree with that. And my other question is, how come? Why? So, like, if they had, like, why not just show him a picture of a full Cosmic Cube? Yeah, because if he could puke up a lunchbox, yeah. he could puke and up a Cosmic Cube. And if he could puke cube. up a fragment of a Cosmic Cube, why not puke up a whole Cosmic Cube? Well, regardless, it did the trick. Yeah, and, 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 but yeah, I do have to agree. That, that is kind of sort of wonky on the power scale of, okay, I can't make a gun, but I can make this reality-altering device. And also, there was a part where they ended up with a uh, ultimate nullifier. Yeah. Uh, I guess Rocket Raccoon and Groot stole it from the Watcher. An- Annihilus. Oh, Anil- Annihilus had it last. Yeah. Okay, I'm used to it being that, in the Watcher's what, tower. It was a prototype or something. But anyway, they, you know, they're like, "Hey, we got this. We can use it to bust open the, uh, the you shield. Know, we, we, we can use it to bust open the shield over Earth." But from what I understand, especially from the early Fantastic Four issues, and from what I've read on Wikipedia in the past, an ultimate nullifier, Galactus is afraid of it. Yep. That was what they used it's the to only get thing rid he of is, him. Yeah, it's the only thing that he is afraid of. Yeah, well, because, you know, Reed basically held it up, and I think, what was it, Fantastic Four number 50 way back yeah, when? Way that was how then. they got rid of him the first time. Johnny Storm went, got it, and Reed held it up to him and said, hey, we're going to use this. And Galactus, and Galactus was like, like, nope. See ya. <laughs> let's, uh, let's not do that. I have heard that that thing is so powerful that if they did use it, not only would it destroy the shield around Earth, but it would destroy Earth. <laughs> there, there, um, there, it depends on who's writing it. Uh, the official handbook of the Marvel Universe says that it, you know, it's the ultimate nullifier. It will destroy pretty much whatever you point it at. So this is but it also has the ability of destroying who you're using it on. You know, like, like we're not like say like if I were to point it at Galactus and use it, there's a chance it would destroy Galactus. It would destroy me too. Okay. Win win. So, <laughs> but they end up using it, and it ends up not the power of the magic of Doctor Strange can't destroy this thing. Uh, the magic of uh, or the powers of whoever cannot destroy this uh, shield. Shield. But and this nullifier does not destroy the shield. Uh, it ends up taking the power of this cosmic cube who after um, you actually think spoiler alert again that Sam Wilson has died because some <laughs> jets shoot him it is interesting to see Sam Wilson get shot by two F-22s yeah <laughs> and when he, he falls to his death and at that point I'm thinking crap yeah all I know. the I said stuff the same they've thing. done I was like you really you're killing I mean, him they, they've every Doctor Strange's magic, the nullifier they're using, Sam Wilson's cosmic cube, it all went to crap. But come to find out, I guess with his dying thought, he wills himself back to life. The explosion happens, everything just do, everything goes good. And so now we're setting up the last two issues of Secret War. 
Our secret empire. And Bucky's back. Bucky's, but that happened at the end of Captain America 25. Yep. But it still surprised me in Secret Empire because I didn't know it was coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just Namor going, hey, uh, talk to my friend. <laughs> yeah, look who I got. So, I mean, that worked out really well. I, I, I like the fact that Bucky's back. I didn't know Bucky was gone. Well, um, apparently I they I been killed him up. early on in there somewhere. Like I, I haven't Captain been called up. Somewhere early in there. But, uh, yeah, we've got two issues left. And I, I don't want to talk about Generations in depth, but because we're going to talk about it in the next video, but I want to discuss where I think Secret Empire is going to go. You think that Secret Empire leads directly into generations? Directly. I think all this time travel stuff, I don't know why. I don't know why it's happening, but I really think that they are going to use, somebody's going to use that Cosmic Cube, mm -hmm. or most of the Cosmic Cube that they get put together, and it's going to transport all of these heroes back in time to a certain point. And that is where, because uh, when uh, the Totally Awesome Hulk, Amadeus Cho, right. whenever he transports, he said that he was in Washington, D.C. Jean Grey, I don't know where she was at. She never said. Right. But Hulk said he was in Washington, Washington And got transported back. And it looks like, well, we'll talk about that in the next yeah. one. Yeah. So, but, uh, it's kind of what we're rolling with here. Um, I really think that this leads directly into uh, generations, so that would be interesting, especially since they're releasing generations while Secret Empire is still out. I, they've, I will, done, they've done this before. Remember when Secret Wars yeah, was going on? Because and they released the Spider-Man, the, Sp the Spider-Man black costume actually made its appearance before Secret Wars number eight. Yeah, and uh, what was it? The other thing, A Force. The, uh, the all-female A-Force title, right. it debuted like halfway through Secret Wars, but it took place after Secret Wars. Right, so right. it's like, Marvel, I'm not really sure what Marvel's doing sometimes on these because you're you're showing them snippets of what's come after, and you've already got this huge list of people that you know are going to survive and everything. But I don't know. I, I really don't know. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen with Secret Empire. I don't know who's going to die. I don't know who's going to do what. But this is going to... This Cosmic Cube, I think, is at the center of it. Right. Yeah, it's well, going to completely big revamp everything. I think they're going to end up bringing a lot of the dead characters back with it. Somebody's going to make some kind of wish. Like, I wish everything was as it was before. Right. And then it's going to be such a broad wish that Wolverine's going to come back. We're going to have well, Jean Grey back. They're going to need several pieces of it, though, because, like, Tony, with that one fragment they had, he went and, you know, the hologram Tony was like, I wish I was a real boy, and it didn't work. Yeah. But he wished for a birthday cake, and somebody brought him a birthday cake. That was a piece. Yeah. It was, that was a chunk. So about if the they size get a chunk of, of them together, then, About yeah. the size of this phone right here is what they had, and there's, what, maybe 10 to 12 of these put right. together makes a cube. So, uh, anyway, that's where we're going uh, remember, we also have our, uh, I don't know if this is going to publish before the end of our contest or not. If this publishes before August 13th, um, remember our Loot Crate contest? I'm probably going to publish this Saturday. Um, remember our Loot well. Crate yeah. Yeah, our loot crate contest uh, ends Sunday, August 13th. To enter, hit that subscribe button down here, the big red subscribe button, and uh, send us a screenshot. And all of the email and everything is scrolling across the top. But all you got to do is subscribe, send us proof of that with your t-shirt size, and uh, we are going to draw Sunday night right before Game of Thrones. We're going to do a live drawing. The email's right there. Yep, there it is. There's we're going to draw. Uh, we're going to do a live drawing right before Game of Thrones, somewhere in the neighborhood of eight thirty. And uh, that's that's pretty much it. That's that's all. For I will. I will say this much. Okay. You had been talking to me about this book for a while, and you know I just didn't really want to get into it. I'm glad you actually talked me into it. This has been a good read. It's fun. Uh, so I'm surprised. Yeah. So I do definitely want to say that there are times where people will recommend books to you, and you're like, no, I don't want to read it because of this. You know, Try it. It might actually grow on you, because like, I really had no desire to read this until I actually sat down and started reading it. And one more little thought that I've had, and I've, I've reviewed this in a couple of my reviews, but um, the art. Have you noticed at the it beginning when everything weird. was... Yeah, everything was all, you know, grimy and, you know, Hydra was 
there was no hope and everything. Yeah. The art was really rough. And, and it's just, getting cleaner as it goes on. Yes. And it's, I've noticed that. It's like the better things get, the cleaner the art. I wonder if that was intentional. I think so. Fair enough. I think it's a good job on their part to let that happen. I agree. So, anyway, uh, that's it for our uh, talk of Secret Empire so far through Secret Empire number 8 and uh, Captain America number 25. And uh, we've got just two more issues left. Be very neat. We're going to have to do a complete review of the series yeah, eventually. We'll, we'll come back to this. So, anyway, this has been a Comic Book Malarkey live at, well, kind of sort of live at Infinity Flux. <laughs> We're <Kitchen> live. <laughs> and uh, I'm Lonnie. I'm Mark. And we are Untitled Nerd Network. Uh, see everyone later.